Hi kids, this week we're going over week 9 packet. So this week's story is called, What Should We Take to the Moon? And it's kind of interesting since they just did the big launch that this would be in our packet this week. Uh, the story is about a boy named Toby trying to decide what things he would want to take to the moon. So he has to make some pretty important decisions. When I'm looking in here, I start to notice things like dialogue, things we've studied right here. Action figures are very important, said Dad. Chewing gum is kind of important. Toothpaste is not so important. Hmm. As I moved on reading the story, I saw a little bit more dialogue in here. And another thing I noticed was that Instead of indenting, which is moving in for each paragraph, they skipped lines. So as you can see there, they skipped a line. Here's another spot. So these are all different paragraphs. And we practice that in writing as well. The cool thing about that is when you read, you can notice things from writing. As I look a little farther, I start going towards the questions. And I read through and noticed that one word that might trip you up is the word motivated in number two. So right here it says, what motivated Toby to begin packing his suitcase? So basically, boys and girls, motivated or motivation is enthusiasm for doing something. So what made him become so enthusiastic enthusiastic to do, to do this packing? Another thing I noticed down here was, um, it says, read these sentences from the text, and then there's this weird thing right here. And what that means is, this part is in the text, and then some more stuff is here. That's what that dot, dot, dot means. And then this part is what they wanted you to read also. So then, after you do that, you'll say, okay, this part was in the text. I know there were some other parts here, and then this part. And what they want to know is, based on the evidence, on this evidence, how does Toby most likely feel about the possibility of going to the moon very soon? So I wanted to point out what those little dots meant because I think they are also in the next portion. So I thought they were over here. It looks like they are not, but that's what those, those do mean. So if you do see them later, that's what they mean. Uh, here's a few more questions. Remember theme of the story. Study that word theme in class right before we went out. And theme is the message. What is the big idea? What, what is the big message here? And then down here is more sentences from the text they want you to read. And then decide what the correct answer for that question is. So moving on, I notice it says to read the sentence from the text. It says it was an authentic moon rock brought home by his brother from space camp. The word authentic. So you might be saying, what does that word mean? Well, authentic means... Um, it is an actual or it's genuine. That's what authentic means. It was a real moon rock, an authentic one, a genuine moon rock. Don't forget, when you see something like this, you want to use full sentences, which means a capital in the beginning and an end mark. So it says, and this one looks like there's only three lines you could always use, you know, underneath also says, what do Toby's choices about what to take to the moon show the reader, which is you, about his personality? So you might start with, um, I think Toby is this kind of kid, whatever, thing, whatever kind you think, and then say why you feel that way. Support it with evidence from the text. For the next one, it says, how would you change the world to make it better? I would love to see what your answers are for these. You could type them out and send them to me in Google Classroom, or you could also send them to my email. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that we could work together to make the world a better place, and I really think that you guys could come up with some great ideas. Okay, for the next part of your packet, it looks like we have um, a times table coloring sheet. So the first one says 8 times 7 equals... So to figure this out, you can skip count by eight, or you can group count by eight seven times, or you could group count by seven eight times. 
And um, what you end up with should be 56 for this. You write 56 here. And then <coughs> if you look down at the bottom of the paper, um, it says for blue, anything blue will be 1-12. So I know a lot of third graders have trouble with this from the classroom. So families, you might need to help your um, your kids on this one. It says blue is 1-12, which means it could be if the answer is 1, if the answer is 2, if the answer is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, all the way up to 12, then it will be blue. Sometimes third graders get confused and think this is just a 1 or a 12. Same here, the greens are 13 through 24. So any number that falls between 13 through 24, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 22, 24. And what we're looking for is the one that is 56. So, oops, if I look closer, I know that 56 is bigger than 48, so it's not going to be orange. And I know that... Um, 56 is bigger than 49, so I go 49, and I know it's smaller than 60, so it's probably going to fall in the red zone, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, yep, it does, it falls in the red zone, so that little section uh, at the top is going to be red where they're pointing to. Okay, so now we have four groups of nine or nine groups of four. So four groups of nine would be 36. You look at the bottom and you will find where does 36 fall? Well, luckily 36 is actually one of the numbers here. So it's yellow. So you would just color that section yellow. Uh, the rest of these are pretty easy. I think if you have trouble with this, you might want to list your skip counting or your group counting numbers or your count buys, and that will help you a lot. All right, for this next part, it says practice solving multiplication word problems. So basically, we're looking at word problems that have groups of numbers, so many groups. Andrea is watching snowflakes fall. She notices that every snowflake has six points. So you kind of have to visualize that, right? She's seeing these and everyone has six points. If she catches seven of these snowflakes with six points each in her hand, how many points does she catch all together? Well, if we have six points, oops, let me pick up a different color. Six points times seven snowflakes equals. So all you have to do is skip count by six, seven times or seven, six times. Then you can write in the answer, and you can also add in, that's how many points. Okay, for this next sheet, they're telling you some secrets that go along with rectangles. So some little hints. It says the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal in length. The sum, remember sum is when you add all the sides together, when you add the sides. The sum of all sides equal the perimeter. So there's two little hints for you. The area of the rectangle equals the height times the width. So we're talking about two different things. We're talking about perimeter, which is the distance around a rectangle. And we're talking about area, which is something we were talking about right at school that also. And area is the amount of, we did tiling, so like the amount of tiles that would cover the inside. And we can't really tell unless we have some measurements. But once we know the measurement of the height and the width, then you can multiply those together to find out how many um, tiles it would take for the inside, and that's area. So it says, what is the height and width of each side for number one? So what we learned was the opposite sides of rectangles are equal in length. So now if this side is nine, that's going to make the side nine. And if this side is 3, that's going to make this side 3. All right, so now I can add all of the sides together to find the perimeter, which is the distance around. So 3 plus 3 is 6, right? Um, 9 plus 9 is 18. 
18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So the perimeter for this equals 24 units around. But if I wanted to know the area, which is square units to fill the inside, I would take one of these sides times the side. So it'll be 3 times 9. And that's going to be 3 times 9 is 27. So 27 square units is the area. And that's basically the information they told you. I really don't think you have to write um, the area and perimeter for this. What they really wanted here, it looks like, for the question is, what's the height and width of each side? So they basically, for this, just want you to know this is 3 and this is 9. Now, as you go farther down the sheet, though, you'll notice they'll start asking about area or perimeter. And that's why I kind of gave you the hint on how to find that for the first one. Okay, family, so we get into the next part that says, what do you know about area and perimeter? And we know that just as we were going out of school, area is something we were working on. And we were taking tiles and we were laying them out and doing tiling. So we were saying that they were square, the, the amount of square units, whatever the unit might be, whether it was inches or cubic unit or um, centimeters, the little guys. And we were talking about how many units it would take to fill the inside of a rectangle or a polygon of some sort. And then we said that perimeter was how much space goes or how many feet would go around this. So what we learned in the last one is if this side six feet, that means this side is six feet based on what we know of rectangles. And we know this is nine feet, so that tells me this is nine feet. So if I'm finding perimeter, I'm just adding all of the sides. So nine plus nine plus six plus six. If I'm looking for area though, I'm going to multiply because that's how many squares would be inside. Six feet times nine feet equals. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm saying, well, I have six rows, so here's one, two, three, four, five, six. <coughs> I'm saying I have six rows with nine columns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. And then I would count all the squares on the inside. So that's what you end up with area. Perimeter is the distance around, you're adding all the sides. 9 plus 9 plus 6 plus 6 equals. And you guys can find the answer for that. And then we take us to the last sheet in here, which is word problems with division. And the thing we need to remember about division is, with division, <coughs> you have a total number, and you're trying to find one of the unknowns. So it might be how many per group or how many groups. It's either, you know, one or the other. So let's take a look what we're looking at. It says the teacher's preparing for a field trip. She assigns 81 students to three different buses. So you can actually just visualize this either, even. Um, how many students are in each bus? So we know the total number, which is 81 students. And we know how many buses there are, right? So we know that. There's three different buses. What we don't know is this unit number here. And to find that is, uh, a way to do this is to say, well, 81 divided by three different buses equals. And you say, oh my gosh, I still can't figure this out. So you can say, all right, well, I can ask my brain, three times what unknown number equals 81? And I kind of know the answer to that one already, right? Three times what number equals 81? Or I could just simply skip count by threes until I get to 81. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, and continue on until you get to 81. What you will find out is that you will have to count 27 threes to get to 81. So this will be 27. And that tells me there will be 27 kids on each of these buses. Moving along to the social studies. The social studies has more really cool pictures in it for you to look at. And they're talking about lumbering. So a lot of the pictures are, well, I think all the pictures are actually about lumbering. 
since lumbering became an important economic activity of Michigan. So economic means how they made money. So they're making money off of lumbering, which is cutting the trees down and using the trees to make boards and things like that. Um, so it says the cause is trees are good. Tree good trees good for lumber and became scarce in many eastern states. Um, another cause was Michigan had both forests and a network of rivers. So what came of that, or what happened because of that, are the effects. There's an event and then the effects. So um, the effects were towns began in lumbering areas to provide goods and services, and the environment was changed as forests were cut down. Like before, they gave you um, the steps in the process answer kind of thing before you actually had the work portion to do. So this is talking about the lumbering process, and this is really the answer key for you. If you look at the next page, they have these all kind of mixed up. Let me pull that page up for you. So here is the actual page where you might want to cut these apart and then put them, or, uh, put them in order or sequence them. Uh, the answer key was the one I showed you before, and I think that came first in your packet also. Uh, once again, I'm just going to say I think the science is pretty self-explanatory. You read through that and then answer the questions. And if you do have problems with anything, please feel free to email me or to um, get a hold of me through the Remind app. And I miss you guys. Bye-bye.